Okay, well, let's go ahead and get started, um, since we seem to have a quorum. Uh, running down the agenda, the viewer pipeline. We have lots of stuff in progress at the moment. Um, in release candidates right now, we have uh, a an updated pipeline viewer that corrects some timeout problems with uh, interact, interacting with the CDN. Um, seems to be uh, performing better. Uh, there may be more changes to make there, but um, that's, uh, you know, this one is definitely uh, an improvement um, over the current release viewer. The uh, Then we have the one that, yeah, the the fixes for attachment issues. Um, Veer is here. We can talk about that in a bit. Um, we also have a you know a maintenance viewer which has a whole collection of bug fixes in it. Uh, and um, there's a snowstorm collection of open source changes. So we got got lots of good stuff there. Um, project viewers we have out now. Um, oh, and I, I should say there's a there's a release candidate that will at this point it looks like it'll come out on Monday. That's an update to the GPU benchmarking changes, um, uh, fixes some problems, and hopefully gets uh, some more things. Yeah, that's that's the. The startup crash, um, but also it also we think it will get better answers for a, a, a few classes of systems. It wasn't it wasn't getting very good answers for. Um, released project viewers. We still have Oculus Rift and Experience tools, um, and now we have the Viewer Managed Marketplace viewer uh, is out as a project viewer. So. Um, and I believe we've got people from that team here. Brooke, you want to talk about Viewer Managed Marketplace? Sure. Uh, so we are very excited to have this available on Aditi. And we've already seen a couple of people trying it out. Um, I'm going to paste a link to the blog post, which has all sorts of links in it. Um, but basically, um, this is something that we'd love to have people who are merchants try out. And obviously, the third-party viewer developers take a look at it. The source code should it be public. And we, I actually, I should have gotten the link from, uh, from Skylar on the updated, uh, SLM API for this. Um, I don't know if anybody happens to have it from when he was here uh, about a month ago uh, and can paste it. Uh, that I think that and the AIS uh, API are things that you all will also be interested in. So uh, we've set up a JIRA project for feedback and obviously let, you know, if, if you need something directly from us that's more urgent than JIRA, um, you can let Oz know or contact me directly. Any questions about any of that, the marketplace changes? Okay. Have at. Let us know what you think. Speak, speak soon. Um, uh, so, uh, sort of an ep update on texture and mesh fetching. Uh, it's it's mostly working well. Um, for some people in some places at some times, it doesn't work as well, and we're continuing to study that and work on it and, um, and hopefully uh, improve it further. Um, but uh, that's, that's all in progress. Um, Thank you, Brooke. Um, actually, I should add that to the 
list of APIs on the on the front page of the wiki. I'll do that. Um, uh, other ongoing updates. We are continuing to do such. Uh, uh, we are continuing to make changes to group chat. Um, we're there's still a mode where uh, that we have not yet diagnosed in which one of the group chat servers stops, just locks up and stops forwarding properly. Actually, what it turns out that what really happens is that it gets way behind, and and eventually the queues get so full that it it stops doing things. So uh, we're trying to diagnose that. It's a lot less frequent than it used to be, which is the good news. Um, the bad news is that we haven't figured out why it does it at all. So we're still working on that, and we'll keep at it until we until we hunt it down and kill it. Um, and uh, well, it, it yeah it it depends on on which which groups you're in. Um, yeah, I, I'm I'm I. I I, I, doubtless, when we figure out what the problem was, we'll know why it got better and worse over time. But we don't know yet. Um, so we're we're continuing to poke at that. Uh, and we have Hover, uh, which is which Veer is working on both Hover and the uh, the various attachment issues that are in the fixes. So we have him here to give us an update on those. Um, fear. Uh, yeah. Let's see. Not uh, not much new on hover. I've got some additional updates for the uh, attachment uh, stuff, which I think will improve the kind of predictability of getting the right appearance uh, as as you're going through outfit changes. Um, that's uh, that's currently in a uh, test viewer that a couple of folks have looked at. Um, that uh, seems to be a, a net win, so I'll be uh, I'll be pulling that into the uh, uh, RC uh, uh, as soon as uh, as soon as I can. Uh, for f the the float uh, is is um, uh, a project basically to let people do uh, kind of an additional fix up stage on. Uh, getting their avatar positioned correctly. Um, we've got, <laughs> unfortunately, several different layers of uh, uh, kind of kludges piled on top of each other for trying to get you to the right height, and sometimes uh, none of it actually works. So uh, this is intended as a kind of a, you know, this time for sure uh, fix-up that's that's going to let people kind of manually tweak things that uh, still don't don't come out at the right height and, and send that information out to other people. Um, so that's that's still in early stages. Haven't got a ton of time on it yet, but uh, we'll uh, keep this group posted as we uh, as we have things to talk about and look at there. Any questions, issues, comments? Well, you guys are quiet today. Um, uh, the Anna had one. The the, the attachment one. Is that related to floating shoes and stuff like that? Uh, the the attachment uh, has to do with um, uh, joint offsets that are defined by uh, rigged mesh attachments. Um, in in particular, the 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 logic for that has always been a little flaky, and uh, just because there's kind of there's order dependencies in what happens as as things are getting changed around, as your uh, shapes are getting applied and your attachments are getting attached and so on. And uh, kind of depending what order things happen in, you can get inconsistent results or incorrect results with your uh, with your avatar appearance. So there's always been a, a fair amount of fragility with trying to change uh, change your appearance when those kinds of uh, rig meshes are involved. Um, and uh, we've been trying to uh, make that a bit more consistent uh, over the last few weeks, and uh, it's it's uh, it's definitely improving. I don't think that we've licked every uh, every single issue. And uh, no, uh, really, I haven't seen uh, I haven't seen the eye bug, but I'm not sure if I've tested exactly the same uh, scenario that uh, Loki's talking about. I need to uh, 
I need to take a deeper dive on that. Okay. Um, and uh, we'll uh, we'll hopefully we'll have something for you in a couple weeks on on the hover thing um, to to fiddle with, but uh, not quite yet. Okay, I I did have one question about the group failures. Um, uh, was any of that real, the, the rash of it that we saw this past week uh, I sort of made an assumption which might have been incorrect that a lot of that might have had to do with a lot of the uh, maintenance that was going on this week no I don't I don't think so um, um, it's it's possible uh, it is an interesting hypothesis that the fact that that maintenance was going on caused lots of people to be logging in and logging out at the, um, you know, in in tight bunches, and that that had a bad effect on the system. Um, but that's a, a hypothesis that has not been tested. Um, it certainly didn't have anything directly to do with the maintenance. The maintenance was only on um, the servers that the simulators run on. Um, the uh, the chat system runs on, a, on on different hardware, and it, that was a hardware issue that we were dealing with. Um, okay, I was just curious because it was uh, it, it did coincide with the start of maintenance pretty much. It, it, uh, the first spate started on Sunday night shortly before the maintenance started, and it just continued all week up until yesterday uh, when the maintenance finished, and it's been pretty quiet today as far as I've been seeing. Hmm. Uh... Well, that's that's an interesting correlation. I I don't know. I, I, we certainly don't know of any reason why that would be important. Okay. Well, just um, just had to ask, and maybe who knows? Maybe it'll. I mean, the big, the big some way. task was was just taking down servers so that the hardware could be checked for a for a hardware problem, uh, and then put back in and powered back up again after it had been checked. Um, so, um, uh, you know, that that was just an irritating thing that had to be done. Uh, but the, the chat servers run on different hardware than, than the ones that were uh, subject to that check, so they weren't directly affected by that, that interrupt. Um, Is the tinker and tweak time over for the fixes for the benchmarking? Well, sorry, the benchmarking? You, you, you were. Uh, yes, the I, benchmark I, I, uh, fixes that have been in progress that you indicated could go are still probably Monday. Are y'all through messing with those? Uh, the, the latest test version um, still set some, uh, a, a couple of systems. Uh, in our in our set of systems we use as tests um, to a lower graphic setting than they really should have. Uh, so we have one more round of changes in hopes of getting those back to uh, what they should have been. Well, we hope it's only one more round of changes. Um, but uh, we, we think we've got the, cla the crashing problem licked. That turned out to actually be a whole series of bugs. So it, uh, um, there were there were different versions of of the uh, crash on startup problem. Um, I was wondering. I may go early with those. Uh, it should should be in RC uh, if if all goes well. Um, Monday or Tuesday at the latest. Um, so, uh, and then uh, we have a no change window 
Wednesday through the weekend uh, next week because of the U.S. holiday, so that so that Lindens can go away and not have their holidays interrupted by emergencies caused by changes. Um, go gorge themselves on turkey and all the all the fixings. So basically, you're saying you don't want us to release on uh, Wednesday? Um, we would appreciate it if you did. Not <laughs> <laughs> uh, the uh, that would not be good. If <laughs> if you do, and it causes a problem, we will make sure that everyone knows. What caused the problem? Yeah, no, we're not ready for release yet. So. <laughs> uh, just send them to uh, our support group, is he? Um, and when it fails, well, uh, we'll blame Linda Lab. <laughs> we'll just do the circle. Okay, anything else? We got um, just, uh, yeah, a couple questions for Izzy. If he found anything out about uh, uh, non-premium members being able to use those phone numbers for uh, things that were obviously server-side, uh, things like the group chat fail, for example. Sorry, I started to type a response, and I'm like, wait a minute, voice, yeah, hey, there you go. Um, basically, the number, especially that billing number, is really intended for billing type issues only, but it is okay for them to go ahead and do a support case for things like you mentioned, the group issue, that kind of thing. Um, obviously, with Second Life, there's not always going to be a direct correlation to what the issue is and what they can pick in the drop downs for the case submission, so just pick whatever's best equatable and we can internally get it to whoever the right people are. Some of the issues you may get, and I apologize for this, but they may get some of the, I'm sorry, you're a basic account pushback. Um, but if we're going to be watching for that kind of thing, and there's some stuff that's going to be coming up down the road that may start addressing that more directly. Uh, but the case submission really is the best way to get that because especially on those group issues, we have to then take that information and get it up to our engineers as to, while they look into the background problem that's actually at the cause. Okay. Thank you. Yeah, we actually have, a, problem. We actually have a regime in place right now for, for chat issues where we, we ask that a bunch of data be captured before they restart the server so that we can try and figure out why it needed restarting. Um, which which does slow down the uh, the, the response time um, and and that's unfortunate but uh, it we think it's important to being able to actually prevent the problem in the future so um, exactly Oz. and that's why the case submission really isn't going to be much different than a phone call because in both instances we're letting the engineers know so data can get collected and so rather than just jumping right to a quick workaround fix rather we're instead putting our effort toward finding a more permanent fix right right and and that's that's not something that uh, anybody should blame support for uh, that's that's at the request of engineering um, we we need that data so yeah, it does well, take a little take, time the, the average user is kind of blaming and how it doesn't matter um, <laughs> <laughs> you, you already know that. Yeah, um, yeah no, that's right. it's, 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 it's why they pay me the big bucks. Yeah. The, 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 other, the other question I had about that is, uh, 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 does Linden Lab Support have something in place where they watch jurors for things like that as well? 
Well, we have people that watch Jira that then collect like number of instances and stuff like that, that then works with engineers and such um, toward finding common problems. Um, I'm not sure if there's somebody specifically watching Jira's for any particular issue. Oz? I think that I, the sense I have, although I don't, I don't have a good, <laughs> I don't have much visibility into the into how support cases are handled. But um, the polling interval on watching um, Jira issues is is relatively long. I mean, we we do look at them every day, but we don't, or at least during the week. Uh, but um, we, it's not like interrupt driven. We don't have somebody seeing everyone the the minute it gets filed and and responding to that some people see them but uh it, it that's not generally going to be the quickest way to get things done and Oz, on the support case side of that, um, and the reason why support cases, honestly, in my opinion, is probably the best way to go, is any time a support case coincides with a JIRA, we're flagging that support case with that JIRA information, so that way weekly when the um, system is polled for how many right. of this particular JIRA, it helps them prioritize and gather data. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, so in other words, the best thing to do is uh, have them file the support ticket plus file the Jira. That would give you more information in the long run. Yeah, there's no, there's no need to file a. So excuse me, I got caught in the yawn there. The, um, there's no need to file a Jira on things like the the uh, chat service. Not okay. Working. We already have one. Uh, and support files all the cases into that one. Um, that part is working pretty well, actually. Um, if it's some, you know, new and idiosyncratic problem, yes, filing a Jira is fine. It's good, in fact. Okay. Just want to be clear here so that we can tell our users. Just and, do it. And all Don't the argue advice you give your users about how to file Jiras in your system applies to our system too yeah <laughs> and just so you know we're taking those support cases and lumping them together with our internal side of the different uh, jiras and such for it so the reason why i say it's not really necessary to do both is it's really just duplicating your each person's individual effort and then also our effort on trying to collate all the information and then having to strip out okay this is a duplicate report this is a triplicate report etc so really just the one path is probably best all around toward getting it completed okay okay thank you very much Well, the the gear that they're talking about is internal. We can't see it anyhow, any. So um. yeah. And everybody in support knows that when they get the group chat kind of issue, what gear we're talking about and how to flag it. Yeah. Yeah. And when they do, I get an email. Has, has there been some problems with the voice services lately? Because I've been hearing some digitalization distortions with the voice services lately. Not that I know of, no. Uh, I mean, we have a round of the the maintenance viewer, the maintenance release candidate viewer has some, has some voice fixes in it. Um, and uh, they're is another round of fixes on its way from Vivox. I, I have no idea what the what the timetable of that is, but um, we uh, we we recently got some uh, some really high quality bug reports uh, from Worley and, and a couple other people, uh, and we're able to track down some some great data on um, some things that needed fixing, and Vivox is going away to fix them. Uh, we have we actually have quite a lot of improvements to voice in the pipeline. Um, so 
So, uh, no, not like updating Linux. Um, not not at all like updating Linux, actually. Uh, well, the Mac is in sync with Windows right now. Uh, but we're we're you know we're we're uh, continuing to work on that, and that's actually going to be something that'll get a lot of, a lot of attention over the next next few months. Oh, uh, I did have one thing actually on those voice issues. If you guys do get reports about a voice issue and it's on a mainland region. Report that as just, you know, a, a standard voice slash lag type issue on the mainland region. It could be that a particular mainland region may have gone longer than it needs to go uh, before a restart or something like that. And so far from what I've seen, that's fixing most voice issues that I see reported. So just to keep that in mind. Is that specifically related to the ones where if they log in on their home region and can't connect to voice, they need to go someplace else and... Uh... Uh, Relogged, actually connect. To me, that typically means that the voice channel for that region either didn't initialize or didn't uh, change uh, when it was restarted. So yeah, a restart is probably what's going to be best for fixing that. On a mainland region, it's typically just a restart. On a private island, it can be just a restart, but I've also seen some of the more difficult ones where you have to disable voice for the region, restart it, and then re-enable voice, but that's just more of a telling uh, our provider, hey, this actually needs to get a new uh, voice channel, and then it's usually fixed. Okay, thank you. That's my observation as well, Whirly. That's been mine as well, Whirly, is that some, even when it's on that region and you tell you teleport out or go to a region and log out where voice services are and then come back, it works fine. I don't know why. That, that's a weird, weird bug on that one. Well, we'd, okay. well, we'd, we'd like we'd it to like be true it. that we don't have to do restarts unless there's a an update. Um, we've gone back and forth on that over time. Be nice if I was rich and handsome too, Annie. Also, Animorph, uh, with that, that it, I could easily see a new form of griefing where someone buys a 16-meter parcel just to gain the ability to restart the region whenever they wanted. Yeah, some of the memory issues we're aware of, and we'd, we'd like to get them fixed. They're, they're among the most difficult of all in the long run. Anything else? Come on, people. We've got to come up with something. I mean, we can't give Oz a, a, a half an hour early start on this weekend. Uh, Oz, how is the work coming on the compiling with BS 20, 2013, I believe? Actually, it's going really well. Um, we're, we're now building successfully on the Mac with Xcode 6.1 and Clang. Uh, and... Um, we are almost done with all the packages we need to do uh, Visual Studio 2013. Um, so, um, yes, this, the parentheses in LL Octree uh, did fix the performance slowdown. So, um, uh, many thanks to um, comparison with Cinder 
comparing notes with Cinder to to lead to that solution. Um, uh, so the um, we'll we'll um, oh the 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 wiki page on the on the tools. Um, well, there's there's already a wiki page on the new auto build changes, and uh, you're welcome to start using that anytime you want to. Um, we will, um, yeah, we're we're working on uh, an internal copy of VS 2013 wiki pages. Um, somebody pointed out to me just last week that Microsoft is now making available. Uh, a community edition of Visual Studio Pro, the same one that we use. Uh, so I think we may um, get to the point uh, very, very soon where we don't have to have two different sets of command line switches. Um, so at least on that level, we will be compatible. Um, it's basically just a... It, it's. It's not like Express in that it's not different software. It's the same software with a different license. Um, basically, you get the same software, only you're not supposed to build anything commercial with it. But you guys aren't selling what you do anyway, so you get the good stuff. Um, yeah, that your voice was pretty horrible there. Um, a lot of stats. Uh, want me to translate that for you, Tank? <laughs> Tank said, sorry for the long link, but that's the link to it right there. Oh. Thank you, Tank. Um, yeah, it's, uh, that's, that's really good news. So what that will mean is, I think, I hope, is that we'll be able to uh, uh, not have so many differences between the, the, the open source configurations and the non-open source configurations. In fact, maybe not any, unless if you're willing to add um, a couple of flags on the end of the command line. So uh, we hope to have a, a nice concise list of what to install on your Windows system in what order and what not to install. Um, uh, in in order to have a, a working viewer development system, it's uh, it's kind of horrible to admit it, but we're we're having to redevelop that list. Um, But we are making great progress on the software. Um, I think I think we'll probably have a VS twenty thirteen uh, version of the viewer next week. And uh, there has also been progress on the changes needed to unlock the wiki. So we will hopefully about the time we'll. Not not too long after we are ready to start posting that stuff, we'll be able to make the wiki editable again. Christmas present? Yeah, right, exactly. Uh, Yeah, we're we're no happier with having the wiki not be editable than than you are, actually. Um, many people are going to test the wiki instructions on a clean system, actually. All of you, for example. Um, but yes, I, um, I'm doing it on on I'm I'm creating virtual machines just for that, actually. Um, Okay, um, I guess we've run out of topics. Yeah. 
There was something still about Cocoa Box. <laughs> uh, we already know the answer. There are no Cocoa Bugs. <laughs> Radars? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Have a great weekend, everybody. Thanks, everybody. Thank you. Thank you. Have a wonderful weekend and Merry Christmas or Happy Thanksgiving to everybody who is going out next week for Thanksgiving. Thank you. Bye, You're welcome, everybody. Oz.